It's still plus politics now. The leadership tussle that ensued and incessant issuings of press statements on directives and counter directives from the National Working Committee of the PDP in Eboni, court rulings and counter directives rulings have deeply thrown the party in the state into a litany of crisis, thus reducing to nothingness a hitherto vibrant party which once enjoyed the goodwill of Eboni people. Now, as a consequence, the party currently has what is described as Ogba Group, the Anya Chuks Group in the state, a situation that political pundits might, say, might jeopardize the chances of the party winning the elections in the state come 2023. Now, on Monday, May, 20, May 2nd, 2022, ONU took over the leadership of the PDP, having received the backing of the national leadership of the party. Miffed by his sudden sack, Okori, proceeded to uh, the appeal court of Abuja to sought for a stay of pending the determination uh, of the substantive suit. Now, on May 31, fast forward, the National Working Committee of the PDP recognized Okori as its authentic chairman in Ebony State. Well, joining us to discuss this and break it down is Charles Otu. He is a political analyst and is joining us from Ebony. Thank you so much, Mr. Otu, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, it's very interesting um, to see the turn of events within the PDP in a point state. I mean, it's very unusual to see the tussle that we're seeing today. Um, you know, um, and the, the national of the party seems to be in the middle of this. Uh, it reminds me of something that I've seen before. Um, and now, also, I, I see that in the midst of this is two former governors, uh, a sitting governor, and of course, um, uh, Yocha Ayu, which is the national leader of the party. Um, what exactly? Paint a picture to us uh, uh, about what's really happening right now. Thank you very much. Uh, the crisis is like you must have heard in the wounds. Self-inflicted. Hmm. Self-inflicted, I would say, because the party after the defection of uh, the in, in, on November 19, 2020, a lot of persons felt, oh, they have left a body, but the soul and spirit of the party is intact. But uh, the, the, the event that played out shortly showed me a wound of desperate. They were not only desperate to grapple, they were not ready to trade a bargain or a pedal or giving anything another. The party can survive and be the party selected with the three elections. Now, it, it, it all started when the issues in court now are. Uh, Development. On the 16th of October 2021, the party held its state congress. And going from the first week of October, when we started the World Congress, that was the only crisis. And those of us who were monitoring events in the country were also physically available in some of the uh, congresses, particularly the state congress. And we could see people who were in a hole to destroy the best people who were out find personal survivors. Of course, you know that when the my uh, left the the part of the contention was about money. And uh, the former state president, Senator Empire, quickly moved in. And was recognized as the of the party. The PDP carried on till that Congress came. A lot of those who felt that, okay, Senator Pias as the, the party should have get a leader from within the next religious of the party in the state. But of course, himself and the other stakeholders prepared uh, Mr. Toshiko Kori who had all along been in Abuja. So, if the not go down well, 
with those who have been supporting specifically and openly Mr. Salah who was the publicity of the party on the interim basis before the Congress. Mr. Alpha has done quite impressively. Uh, Mr. Otu, I, I think we're, we're having a little problem with your audio. We're going to fix that. We'll take a, just a quick break and fix that, and then we'll come back because we're losing some of the important things that you're telling us. We'll be right back after this break. It's still plus politics. Uh, we're still speaking with uh, a political analyst in Ebony State, Charles Otu. Mr. Otu, before that break, we, we were still talking about the situation that, of course, threw up um, Okorie and, of course, Onu. Now, um, for, for, I'm sure that you are aware that um, Okorie is demanding a two billion naira. Um, he's saying that this has to be paid for libel. He's, he's demanding this from Onu. Uh, saying that they have to pay for damages. Um, again, how feasible is this? And like I said at the beginning, the, the national of the party seems to be in the middle of this war. There are counter accusations, accusations, statements are being issued back and forth. Why can't the party solve this problem? I know that the PDP keeps saying constituting committees to address issues, but have these issues been addressed in its entirety? And how would this affect uh, the elections come 2023? Thank you very much. Uh, the, you rightly point, you were very right when you pointed out that um, the party's national leadership has been at the middle of this. Now, it was the indecision, like I was trying to point out, of the national leadership of the party to stamp its authority especially when the Court of Appeal, um, when the, I mean, the Federal High Court sacked Okori, that made it difficult for the party to make progress quickly. Now, when Okori was sacked, they were supposed to be an appeal that should be filed immediately. Mm. Well, without diving into the merits, we were meant to understand that that was not immediately done. Now, what that meant was that at the end of uh, the, the, when the processes were offered, the party had issued directives and counter directives. It had said in a press statement by the public secretary of the party at the national level that the Congress, the state primaries, we hold on the 28th and 29th. Mid into, midway to that, the same party issued a counter directive and said, look, that it has been postponed. And having, uh, you know, complicated our neck and all of that, the Anishuk's faction, uh, if Anishuk OD, uh, popularly known as Anishuk, went ahead to hold that uh, primaries. The other faction stayed away from it because they felt that the counter announcement of the party would prevail and they fixed the 4th and 5th of June for their own faction. Now, and uh, in all of this, you, you, you see a party's national leadership that was not decisive. It did appear from what we have gathered that the national leadership of the party were taking, they, 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 they were divided. Some were siding on issues, the other was siding over. And at the end of the day, the crisis of who takes over the party's ticket as the national candidate of the party, of the presidential candidate of the party, did not help matters. We learned authoritatively that why Atiku was backing Anishuks, uh, the other group, that is all back group, we are backed by Mike, that further polarized the party at the national level. Interesting. Now, the and that is what has continued to play out. Now, now uh, co the court uh, at some point had de re declared the rescheduled Eboy primaries as invalid. So as it stands... Um, there's yet to be someone who the party can point to as its candidate getting set for the 2020 elections. And I did ask, um, I think, a couple of times, what does the future portend for the Ebony State PDP? Um, whether, the, whether the national deals with this issue or not, is there an end in sight? 
and does this one way or the other um, cost, or might this cost them the ticket come um, 2023 if it's not being dealt with? Okay, uh, a quick one, a correction for that matter is that the party did submit based on the Federal High Court ruling the name of Ifa Nchukwodi as the candidate of the PDP. So it is not vacant, it is not in contention. For now, until a superior court speaks otherwise, Ifa Nchukwodi is the authentic candidate of the PDP. Now, that is on, that is on one hand. And then you, you look at the issue of the Court of Appeal decision that asked that the matter, the, the court verdict that declared that he should be the authentic flag bearer of the party, having been shortlisted by INEC, that it should be retried and revisited. One, the Court of Appeal made two significant decisions. First was that it should be retried. Mm -hmm. Secondly, that the Federal High Court, the Chief Justice of the Federal High Court, should reassign the matter for retrial to a different judge. So now, when you look at this, you see them going back to the drawing board. Hmm. The implication is that the party is battling to be time and may not be time because everything about substitution of candidates, windows for new fresh primaries, will be closing within this middle of, middle of August. Mm -hmm. Now, this is August 1. The party just have about two weeks or thereabouts to sort itself out. Now, the Anishuk, that is the uh, Ifan Yudri, has proceeded to the Supreme Court to appeal the Court of Appeal decision asking for a retrial, a retrial of the decision of the earlier decision of the Federal High Court in Abakaliki. Now, the, before the Supreme Court will sit on the matter, to decide whether to uphold the prayers of any issues or to throw them back again to give back into the Court of Appeal earlier ruling mm. that the matter should be retried, the whole window for substitution would have been foreclosed. Mm. Does this so mean does this, this mean that does this mean that we're going to see if it continues the way it is going, okay. the party may not have a candidate for Exa the 2023 elections? Exactly, because I was going to say, um, we know that, you know, in the midst of all of this, we see, you know, a crisscrossing, an exodus of sorts. It, might that also happen because of this imbroglio? Do we see people leaving the PDP uh, if they do not get a fair hearing on this matter going forward? Of course, of course, people have started uh, leaving the party already. Yeah, uh, of course, from, our, from my intelligence, uh, some of the party supporters have already started leaving the party. Why do I say so? I say so because if you had read in the news recently, you would have seen some of them decamping to other parties, some to APC, some to Afghans, some to other parties in the state. Now, what, what this means is that some of them who, may, who feel they may not have the patience to go through the litigation hall from the local court again to Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court, they feel, some of them feel that the best thing they can do is to find a candidate in another party to support. And some have started moving already. That is already on course. Uh, what you should take as a takeaway from this is that the, a party may have a Zafra and River scenario that played out in the APC in 2019. And the two candidates that are contending for this governorship ticket seem very desperate mm. and show that the party gets to that level. So that is the truth. And that is the fact about what is going on in the body. Well, I want to say thank you. Charles Otu mm -hmm. is a political analyst and he joined us from Ebony State. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. We'll keep our eyes on this story as it develops. Thank you. Thank All you right. Well, it's time for my take. Before we wrap up the show tonight, I'd like to give you my take. Here's my take. It's interesting that in 2022, we're still talking about solutions to the problem of terrorism. Yes, terrorism is not something that you can beat in one day. Terrorism is not a fight that we can fight in one day because it is not a usual warfare. It's a guerrilla warfare. So I'm wondering, last year, 
the UAE helped us by getting the people who decided to fund terrorism. They helped us out to give us the list of those people. What happened to the list? Also, recently, the BBC has come up with a documentary going into the nukes and the crannies of this country to find out what is at the bottom of the terrorism that has been taking the lives of innocent Nigerians, ripping mothers from their children, killings and torturings. And of course, even Nigerians who have no money, crowdfunding to get their loved ones out from the kidnappers' den. But our government has decided that they will fight the BBC, that they will fight daily trust. These are journalists who have come from outside the country, talking about the BBC, to help us get to the bottom of our problems. So I ask Nigerians, help me, why is it that outsiders are most interested and place more value on human lives than the governments that we have in place? Of course, Mr. President has told us that he's done his best, but my question is, is your best good enough, Mr. President? Again, I ask the government of the day, why are we still thinking like we do not know what to do to deal with the issue of insecurity? Is the president's hands tied? What is happening to our security officials? We said we needed Tokano jets. The Tokano jets are here. What are we doing with it? How long will we keep losing innocent lives of Nigerians? For a government who really, really wanted to govern us, Mr. President, you tried so many times to be president of this country, and finally, you were given the opportunity. Is this what you wanted for us? At the beginning, is this what you want to leave at the end as a legacy? I'm wondering, how long will we stay in this place, wondering, gnashing our teeth, and hoping that somebody will come save us? I'm guessing that our leaders should be our savior. Okay, people are saying we want to impeach Mr. President, and some others are saying, oh, well, it's political. Where does the life of the average Nigerian come in? I'd like to say, Kadaria Ahmed put out a statement, a very long one, talking about the fact that the Nigerian media is glorifying, you know, terrorism. But how do we make sure that we get to the solutions of our problems if we cannot tell the story behind the problem of terrorism? So I, I leave it to you, Nigerians. Think, act wisely. Elections are around the corner. If you are campaigning for somebody, find out where that person stands on this issue of insecurity. Maybe that might inform who you vote for. I am Mary Anacle, this is my take.